There is no proof love makes you happy or conquers all, but there are some essential skills you can learn to create a deeper connection and more intimacy in your relationship, even if it is a little bit broken or pretty much over. Dr. Bill Cloak is a Los Angeles-based psychologist and couples therapist. He's the author of Happy Together, Creating a Lifetime of Connection, Commitment, and Intimacy. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Bill Cloak to Studio 4 to tell us more, and welcome to Vancouver. Thank you. It's great to be here. Happy Together reminds me of a song by the Turtles, yep. You and Me and Me and You. Mm -hmm. It starts out pretty good, usually. Starts out pretty good. Everybody starts out with good ideas and good intentions and love in their hearts, but then real life takes over, and mm -hmm. real life is difficult. Children, families, family dynamics, things we learn about, you know, how to survive in our own family don't necessarily work, you know, like what saved, may have saved you then might be killing you now in your <laughs> most current relationship. So well, we tend to bring to a lot with us. Yeah. Our, our moms, mm -hmm. our dads, our experiences as kids. Yep. So it's not just him you're marrying. You're not, I'm assuming. Yeah, there's a lot of layers in people's personalities that have to do with their experiences. It's kind of like a archaeological layering, and all those experiences have impact and power. And sometimes we don't know what they are. Sometimes we're unaware of what happens inside and how that can be influencing mm -hmm. us. And so there's deeper issues that oftentimes can be uh, very powerful and and unknown to us because they happened so long ago and they happen on such a consistent basis that they just come pouring out in defensiveness and attack and criticism and withdrawal and contemptuous and angry behavior that is really very you know, destructive sure. to loving feelings. Deeper issues like what? Something that happened well, be between you and your father or you and your mother? Well, let's say you came from a household where everybody screamed and yelled at each other every time there was any kind of problem or you're mm -hmm parents had, you know, alcohol problems or they had a lot of fighting between each other. Uh, if the parents were gone or not available or missing in action or the parents never talked to their children about how they felt or what was going on or ever talked about anything important, you know. So mm -hmm. all those skills are that kind of uh, emotional vocabulary, you know, being able to understand what our feelings are telling us, what they mean, so we can express them. So a lot of times the feelings are there and all, the only thing that's coming out is anger. So sure. anger is sort of a, an indicator that, you know, oftentimes mm. four or five different things may be going on, but anger is the, is, is the expression. So what we try to do is try to say, hold on to that. That's just an indicator that something's up. There's a lot of things that are going on underneath it, like hurt feelings and shame feelings, you know, feeling bad about ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't feel like we're good enough. We don't feel like we, you know, we feel powerless. We don't feel like we can do it right. And so a lot of men you hear saying, you know, I, I, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't, right? <laughs> right. And, and, you know, that's a sense of giving up. Like, I can't do anything right, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what. And so there is definitely a need to let people know when they're doing things right, you know, being able to express appreciation and be able to show, you know, this is, gee, thank you for doing that, but this is really important to me moving forward, you know, and that's the difference between a criticism and a complaint. Now really, a criticism is about what you've already done, and it's bad. Mm -hmm. A complaint is really about what you can do better in the future. Like, you know, I really love it if you could do this next time. That's a whole lot better than saying you really screwed up. You know, people have much better reactions because they feel like there's a way out. There's mm -hmm. a way to succeed. Oh, you want to succeed? Here's how you can do it. Mm -hmm. So you're really building pathways for people to, to feel like they're doing things right, or they can. Of course, and I, uh, I'm sure you've talked to many couples where the woman says, particularly the woman, perhaps the man, I feel lonely mm -hmm. in this relationship. Uh -huh. I live with this man, he provides for me, uh, takes care of the kids, he's a good man. Yeah. And I feel lonely. Mm -hmm. What's that about? Well, he's probably deep never... Deep loneliness. Yeah, the deep loneliness is they're, n they're not taking time to make a connection. Mm. Connection is sort of the big deal in relationships. I mean, it's all about what we do to connect with each other. And there's about four different processes that we use that help connect, and then there's about five different things we do. So the four things is something I call cure, which is compassion, understanding, respect, and empathy. If you're not using one of those, either with yourself, in your relationship with yourself, which is oftentimes 
the key to everything else. Right. Uh, but also in your relationship with your with your the person you love. You know, if you're not being respectful, if you're not being compassionate, if you're not listening, if you're not expressing how you feel and what, letting the person know mm -hmm. what you want or what you need, you're just burying everything and being you know a good person. The connection is lost. You know, but there's certain things we can do to create connection. You know, good sense of humor sex. is a great thing. <laughs> sex, sex and affection. Mm -hmm. Okay, good communication, real good. Uh, problem solving techniques you know if you really get in and you can solve problems well like good fights you know productive fights mm -hmm. all couples fight but they don't always fight fair they don't always know how to fight you know hit below the belt they you know they do all kinds of things where they hurt each other and then being good friends you know being able to sit down with each other and talk to each other about things that are important what do you make of couples who, who say to you we never fight we never fight. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. You have to fight about, or at well, least discuss, or at yeah. least disagree. Do you not? Right. Well, if this you're is not, humans? if you're not fighting, you're probably not connecting. So fighting is one of the most important ways we create love. Interestingly enough, conflict, mm. good conflict, creates love. Constructive Just, conflict, you call constructive. it. Constructive. Yeah, constructive complaining. Constructive complaining. Mm -hmm. So if we can work things out in a really good way, it's like. When I'm in, an, in, in a, uh, a discussion or an argument with my wife, the best thing we can do is probably first, you know, calm down and think about what we're doing and try to figure out what's going on. But it's really a lot of it's acknowledging one another, you know, really hearing mm -hmm. each other out. Oh, I hear you're saying this. And I understand your feeling. And acknowledgement doesn't mean agreement. It just means I get it. I get your experience. I understand what you're trying to tell me. And if we can also say, well, I'll try to do those things. I'll try to help out. I mm -hmm. can be generous. You know, well, what's how the, how's the woman going to feel? Like, hey, what a guy! I love this guy. You know, <laughs> love this guy. Do anything for me, yeah, right? Right. Because all women uh, want to be valued, and all humans want to be valued. Right. And right. if you think somebody values you, even if they disagree with you, you're yeah. okay with it. Yeah, I don't agree with your opinion, but I value your right to mm -hmm. have it. It's like, you know, Thomas Paine. You know, I, I may completely disagree with you, but I <laughs> exactly. I'll fight to the death. You're, you're mm -hmm. you know. But true happiness is uh, when what you think and say and do is harmonious, right. really, right. but love does not necessarily make you happy. It no. doesn't. Happiness is an inside job. That's what you say, and yeah. tell me about that. Well, I think that if, if, if you're self-critical, mm -hmm. if you have incredibly high expectations for yourself, if you have lingering depression, if you feel like a failure, if you don't feel good about who you are, it doesn't matter how good your relationship is. Right, love yourself. You're, you're going to feel bad. So the ability to be self-accepting, finding things that really get to you, get, getting something you can feel passionate about, being able to be the kind of person that you believe is worthy of being loved. In other words, I think that's the big challenge of marriage is being that person that someone would love. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you are kind and if mm -hmm. you are understanding and if you are helpful and you pay attention and you make time for your relationship and you're, you're there and you got a good attitude and you're having fun and you're there for the hugs and, and the good times, and you know, you're going to create a loving relationship. Sure, but expectations can be lethal. Always. To a relationship. Yeah, totally. Because we make things up. If you love yeah. me, you buy me a mink coat. <laughs> <laughs> or if you love me, yeah, you works. pick me up on time. Yeah, all, all right. of that. Or right. uh, you know, you imagine going on a trip together, and y you you play the movie before you go on the trip. Then when you yeah. get on the trip, it wasn't right. what you expected. Mm -hmm. It's a silly thing, but we right. all do it. People play the movie of their marriage, mm -hmm. of the way it's supposed to be, or themselves, the way they're supposed to be. So, big expectations create big disappointments. That's the key. You have to bring your expectations into reality, which right. sometimes is hard to find. Like, what's a realistic set of expectations mm -hmm. for a marriage or for myself? Sure, it's the you what know. the hell, whatever answer. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. I, it sounds a little trite, but as you say, love does not just happen. It works on a far grander scale than eyes across the right. room. So take me to another scenario, and you talk about it in Happy Together. Some people get married for the wrong reasons. Yep. They aren't really in love. Right. Or maybe they're not even friends. Sometimes that's true. It's mm -hmm. kind of silly. It's kind of silly, but people do it. And uh, so how do you make a relationship like that? Connect, find intimacy? It's very difficult if you don't 
have it initially, or you don't, it, there isn't some fundamental feeling there. Mm -hmm. it, you can create, I think, a good friendship. I think you can be good friends. You can uh, learn how to be uh, good partners, good friends. Right. And some people, that's enough. They don't want uh, a great love in sure. their life. Some you know, people, the wanna... money's enough. Yeah. <laughs> they say, well, some good people, lifestyle, don't yeah. like the guy so much. Right. Some people want to get married. They want to have children. Mm -hmm. They want to raise a family. They want to find a good partner. They find a good partner. And their expectations are really rather low. But oftentimes those relationships work pretty well because they're not expecting it. Right. You know, like they say, there's an inverse ratio between the size of the marriage and the length of the uh, the, uh, the size of the wedding and the length of the marriage. Really? Yeah, because the expectations are so grand. I see. Going into the huge, enormous mm -hmm. wedding, and it's this fantastic thing. And then, real life is pale in comparison. Right. So if you elope. Know, may last longer. Who knows? <laughs> when we come back, I want to talk to you uh, about male-female differences and why we connect mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. who we connect with. Okay. Are we different? Mm -hmm. uh, Happy Together is his book. Bill Cloak, our guest, has a PhD. Of course he does. He's a psychologist and a couple's therapist.